Hey, it's Jenny here from Jenny's Mask Studio. I'm going to show you how I make the face masks with a polypropylene filter liner, um, also called Smart Fab. They, it comes in um, a big roll and I just cut it into seven and a half by seven and a half inch squares. And that allows me to still fold in my sides and not have a bunch of bulk over where the um, ear, where the ties are for the pulling behind your head. Um, my kids are awake. I tried to do this while they were asleep, but that didn't happen. So there might be some noise in the background, but um, this is just because I want to help people. So if this is helpful to you, awesome. If not, it doesn't bother me. So, okay. So seven and a half by seven and a half, you can buy this in double weight. Um, I prefer to just um, stack two because some people only like the one because they want to be able to breathe a little bit more. And, um, but for the most protection, I would do two. Okay, so you're gonna take your two um, pieces of Smart Fab. You're gonna have um, two pieces, one for the front and one for the back of your mask. This is about 10 and a half inches wide by eight and a half um, inches this way tall. Um, and, and then with the corners cut out. You can notice that the, um, the nose piece side is a little bit wider than the bottom side. So I'll link the uh, pattern as well. I got this pattern, it's not my own. I got it from Eigen Crafts and it's just, I love it. Um, I've been making, I don't know, thousands by this point uh, using this mask and uh, it just works really well. And I don't, you can sew it so that it's more um, structured. I don't like it structured, so I don't do that um, other stitching and I'll show you where you can do that. Another reason uh, not to do that is every time you sew into your fabric, you're creating little holes. And so that those little holes are going to let um, aerosols in and so if again if you want the most protection you don't want to have any you know sewing into <laughs> right into your nose and mouth so that's just another reason why not to do it that way why to do the relaxed way but um it's totally a personal preference so okay so i take my two pieces um i got my smart fab i have a piece for the nose um this piece is two inches by five and a half inches and this part too, you know, you don't have to put a nose wire in, but if you want to have that really good fit um, around your nose and the, um, the bridge of your face, then you're gonna want this. And the reason I do an extra piece as opposed to having it sewn in is that then you can take your wire out and, um, and wash your mask, or if your wire gets bent up, you don't, you don't have to throw away your mask or have a, mask that doesn't fit well because you can just replace the nose piece okay the nose wire okay so the first thing you're going to do and i've already done this but i'll show you how i do it is you're going to fold in the sides okay fold in both sides a quarter of an inch and then you're going to fold and i would press it and then fold it in half okay and then what you're going to do is you're just going to stitch down this side and this side, okay? So that's gonna create your nose casing. Then what you'll do, and this is the part I've already done, but you'll put your nose casing right up here. You'll put it on the top of your mask, so that long part, okay? You'll put it at the top of your mask. Um, another trick for getting it center is um, if you fold your back piece in half and give it a little crease, and then do the same thing with your nose piece, then you can line those creases up so it's center. Um, and then I just put the Smart Fab on the back and I just center it on the back. And then it will be secured up here where you sew along the bottom of your nose piece and it will be secured in your corners. And then when you do your folding, it will also be secured in the seam. So I used to sew it all the way around, um, but now, if I use a little bit bigger piece of Smart Fab, I don't need to do that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna just sew right along the bottom of your nose piece, 
you can see just maybe an eighth of an inch below. And after you do that, you're ready to put the rest of your mask together. So you're gonna take your top piece and you're going to put it right sides together with your bottom piece. So your nose piece is gonna be sandwiched in there. Smooth it out. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start right at this top corner and I'm gonna sew all the way around a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I'm gonna leave this side open over here so this end open so that I can turn my mask right side out the reason I, I use that side is because there's not going to be a um, piece of smart fab sticking out of the corner so I just do the end so I'll just show you how I do that okay so just quarter inch seam allowance uh, make sure you backpack quarter inch from the edge Hayden what are you supposed to be doing nope dogs I told you there might be some interruptions here all the way around. Now I'm going to cut my corner so that I don't have as much bulk when I'm turning it right side out. And then I'm also going to cut those little corners that were poking out from my smart fab. So cut, cut, cut. Oops. Don't cut your seams. Cut that piece off. Okay, so now I can turn my mask right side out. So I'm just gonna grab it through there and just push it out. Now I've used the end of a paintbrush, um, chopsticks, you know, whatever kind of long pointy thing you have to poke out the corners. My kids even, we made these Harry Potter ones out of chopsticks with hot glue and then painted them. So this is my favorite tool for um, poking out my corners. So I'm just gonna go into each corner and get a nice point. Sometimes you have to, you might get caught in your um, smart fab, so you might have to readjust, but I'm just gonna go all the way through, pull this out, all my corners out. Okay, and then I'm just going to take it to my iron and I'm going to press it. And I'm just going to, I'm going to press it with the bottom side um, down and just make sure that it stays, like the top stays over the bottom. And I use, I'll use steam sometimes. Um, I use it at a wool setting because if you use it higher than a wool setting, so this is just like a medium setting, if you use it higher, then um, your smart fab will melt. I've had that happen before I started learning how to do this better. So now I'm gonna just turn the end in just a quarter of an inch, just like um, I sewed around the outside. Press that down. little threads in there okay and now I'm going to top stitch around the whole thing and I usually do about an eighth of an inch around it and it doesn't matter where you start because you're already done turning it and we're halfway there
You just want to make sure that you stick to an eighth of an inch because if you sew too far down along the top here, then you're not going to have much room to put your nose wire. Tyler, can you hand me a nose wire in that um, little glass cup right there? Thank you. So your nose wire is going to go in the top here. And if you sew too far down up here, you might not be able to get your nose wire in. And I just get those nose wires on Amazon. I've tried different ones, and I can link to the ones that I like the best. I used to use cut wire as well, but um, th these green garden ties, but they weren't always the most comfortable for people, even though I like them because they didn't need to be removed and they lasted a long time, but got to be comfortable. I'm just going to go right around all the sides. to fold okay so I have this little folding template um, it's two and three quarters inches wide by 11 inches long and what I do with that is I lay it across my mask and kind of center it on the ends here I usually do it a little bit closer to this top corner than this top corner um, just because when I get to folding it, I like to have a little bit more of a fold up down there. And I'll show you why in a second. So I'm going to put this over. And you know, because of, of um, when you sew, this side may not look exactly like this side. And that's okay. So you're just going to fold up on your template. And then fold down. Um, I call this the envelope and then you're going to press it you can just press it with that cardstock right in there some people use um, cardboard I just use cardstock so it's not so thick okay so now that you did that um, this is where if you want to have that structured seam you would sew along the top and the bottom of your envelope but I'm not going to do that I'm going to fold over my sides. Okay, these are the these are the casings that your ties are going to go into. And you want to just make sure that you see that little triangle in there. Okay, can you see that the dark brown behind there, the back? You want to be able to see that triangle. That way when you fold it up, you have enough room to fold it up. And let me show you what would happen if you didn't have that triangle. So if you didn't have that triangle, if this was over here okay you can't see that triangle now I try to fold it up and look what's going to happen I can't fold it all the way up to the top like I'd like to okay so I'm going to press in my tie casings so I can see my little triangle let's do both sides and then I'll clip it Okay, use some steam. Okay, then I'm going to fold it and clip it. And then this one I'm not going to clip because I'm just going to do it. So fold it over. Now I'm also going to just sew um, as close as I can to this side because I want to be able to have the biggest opening to put my ties through here. This is not a tie, but to put your ties through. So again, if you sew this um, down here, if you sew this really close to the edge, you're not going to be able to get your tie in. So I, I want to make my tie casing as wide as I can. So I'm going to sew it pretty close to the edge. And then you just want to make sure you back tack the beginning and the end. Okay, 
do the same thing on the other side. And I'm just gonna trim all my little ends afterwards. Backpack. Okay, now that I've done that, you can trim your ends if you want. Now I'm gonna do the folding part. So if this doesn't come all the way to the top, that's okay, but you want it to come mostly to the top. So I'm gonna put that up to the top. This one I'm gonna fold down below. And I'm just gonna make sure, this is really hard to show, I hope you can see this, but I want this edge, you wanna see that? I want this edge to be parallel with my tie casing. So I might have to do like some, so that's about, at least with this one, about as parallel as I can get it. And you can see how far it hangs down. So if you want it to be snugger, then this full, this will not, you don't want this to, to hang down as much. So I like to do it just like to where it's maybe, I don't know, a quarter of an inch hanging down. And then I'm gonna sew that. And again, I'm gonna sew it pretty close to the edge of that tie casing. So it's gonna look something like that. I'm gonna repeat on the other side. Um, sometimes what I do is I'll fold this in half and then line up my tie casings. Boys, can you feed the dog? And then I can make sure that this one hangs down the same amount as the bottom one, okay? And then I'm gonna sew that down. If you want, you can press it, but it's pretty um, stiff because of the smart fab in there. Okay. And then you just have to trim up your threads and you're done. So I'm going to pause it and I'm going to get my ties so I can show you how I put my ties in. Okay, I'm back to show you how I do my ties. So I cut, um, I buy swimsuit fabric by the yard. I buy it from madewhimsy.com and I cut it into one inch strips. And then after I cut it, I pull it and it creates, so you don't have to use elastic. This is super comfy. Um, it's like elastic, but it's made out of swimsuit, so it's really soft. So I'm gonna take my tie, I'm going to Take a, this is just like a children's um, plastic needle. I'm gonna t put it through there. And then I've got my back of my mask, my nose piece at the top. I'm gonna go down this way and then up the top. So down one side. Sometimes it gets hooked on your um, fabric there. Like it is right now. Pull it through, and then you're gonna go up through the bottom because my bead is gonna be at the top for adjusting. And I didn't come up with the idea of these swimsuit ties either. Um, somebody in our Mask for Vashon group came up with them. And I don't know, I probably have 50 colors now to go with all my fabrics. Okay, so see, I'm having trouble getting it through. Let's keep trying. Sometimes I'll go through the other side and just kind of try to open up my, so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, pull that through. Now you can see, you know, it was a little tough to get it through, but it wasn't that tough. So again, if you make this um, tie casing too narrow, you won't be able to get your tie through. Okay, so now that I have that, sometimes I might need to tug it a little bit, sorry, my camera's shaking, okay. And now I'm going to put 
take my pony bead. This is how I'm going to adjust it so I don't have to tie it. Okay, I'm gonna put the tie. This is really hard to show. Oh, now I just lost my bead. Okay, I'll put it down low so you can see it. Okay. Stay still, camera. Okay. And then I'm gonna just push this through. Okay, it helps if you just do it on the corner of your um, swimsuit fabric. Pull that through. And then another person taught me how to do this burrito method for getting your tie through the other side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lay this out just to make it clear. I'm gonna be putting this end through the opposite way through the bead. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna open this up. This is like my burrito. I'm going to put in the inside and I'm gonna roll it up in there because it rolls because of the, being the swimsuit fabric. And then I'm just gonna push that bead over and pop it out through. And then I'm going to tie a knot on each end. Okay. And then I'm gonna put my nose wire in. And there it is, my relaxed 3D face mask. So again, you could make it more structured when you were doing the envelope to sew across the bottom and the top, but um, I don't like to do that. So that's how you make the mask. Um, I'm gonna show you how I fit it now, if you'd like to see that. Okay, so what I do is I, with the mask facing me, I put the bottom loop over my head, lift up my hair, put the top loop over the back of my head, and then pinch the nose, put this a little higher so you can see, and then I'm gonna pull up on these ties so that it tightens the strap behind the back of my head. And then, hopefully you can see this, I'm gonna pull apart the ends of the ties. Like that. And it's gonna, um, this will probably slide down. So when I have long hair, my hair down, I lift that up, my hair up, and then I can just lift it over my ears. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the nose, make sure it's really nice and snug. It's not sitting, um, because of that um, material on inside, it's not touching my mouth. And then I can check for a seal. So you can see the mask moving in and out. Um, it's pretty snug and um, it's gonna be warm. You have two layers of a filter liner in there. Um, if you don't want it as warm, you can just put one layer. If you're gonna double mask, you could put no layer in here and just wear a surgical mask or an N95 mask or another mask underneath. These work really well with a um, surgical mask underneath. I'll, I'll just pause it and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so if I have a double mask already, I'm not gonna put another um, layer underneath because I already have four layers here. Even if I only had one layer of Smart Fab, I still have a three layer mask. So, but what I would do <clears throat> is just put my surgical mask on. You can see these just, I don't know, they don't fit very well. The nose piece always runs up into my eyes. So you can see pretty much covers the entire surgical mask. So you get a really good coverage but it's not gonna be the easiest to breathe through because you're breathing through five layers. Well, the surgical masks usually have three layers, so you're breathing through um, seven layers of fabric or material, so probably don't wanna do that. So anyway, that's how I make them. Um, I hope that's helpful. I just, I just do this so that um, if you're looking for a new way of making masks or making them safer, um, this is one way to do it. So I hope that's helpful and I'll see you later, bye.